Hello, hi, and welcome to our, our bi-weekly dev stream. Uh, my name is, is Matt, and I'm back, and I'm not sick anymore, and I have more of a beard, and my mic is in my face. And uh, HB is not here, unfortunately, today. Well, he's, he's here at the office. Yeah, he's, he's you know, he's, he's just uh, he's not, not a little under the weather. Well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we're here to talk to you about uh, cool new stuff happening in Foxhole, and, uh, you know, catch up with you guys. We just released a uh, update, an update. Oh, the music's still playing. <laughs> I, I was like, something is wrong. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. <clears throat> I haven't done this in like a month. Okay, the music is not playing anymore. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the chat's just like spamming music. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, we released an update just recently. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's we were just talking about how it can be a little awkward to release an update and then immediately do a stream. Um, yeah, it's like, the, so. it's like the machine always keeps on rolling on. Yeah. Um, I was actually off last week. Um, I didn't really have that much of holidays, so last week was my was my real holidays, and um, it was hard to to not uh, be here with when the update was actually released. Like I saw what was going on, and, <laughs> yeah. and I had to just force myself a couple of times to like step away. Um, and and it was uh it's good to it was good to not be um at the office for a week because when you get back uh you have a fresh mind yeah you're like and, renewed <laughs> and you sort of um need that once in a while to make sure that you're going in the right direction right because you can get so busy putting your heads down just sort of working on the next thing without taking a step back and looking at the big picture um and make sure that 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 you're still um heading in the right direction right yeah so no, totally, and and it's and it's is good to get your head out of that space a little bit sometimes, be, just to step away and come back. Because if you uh, if you're so just down in the trenches all the time, you sort of lose sight of the bigger picture. Absolutely, and I think that a lot of our bigger um, our bigger accomplishments have been a result of that. Like most of World Conquest was born out of this idea um, that came after we. Uh, I, I remember World Conquest was was conceived specifically. I remember when um, was when we came back from uh, the Christmas holidays, like back in two thousand and seventeen, <laughs> yeah. uh, or rather Christmas two thousand sixteen, and and we came back and we were like, hey, like why are we like why are we not doing the thing that we want to do? Because I think we had some plans to do like a lesser thing, like like a lesser yeah. version of, of World Conquest. We're like, why are we doing it? And then we came back. We're like so clear we need to do it <laughs> it was almost like no no more questions there and in a similar way like um you know now it's even harder because there's there's, there's the game's a lot bigger there's a lot more players we're on this treadmill that never ends um you still do need those moments where you come back and and you sort of say wait a minute why aren't we doing this really important thing that needs to be in the game right is it because we're too yeah. busy for it is because we've lost track of what's important and which brings me to the next topic is that we are planning a lot of really big things in the background. Um, I'd say <laughs> even bigger than the world revamp, as crazy as that sounds, um, um, at least on some level. And uh, and I can't. It's going to be a while, I think, before we we have it all laid out. Then we can talk about a whole bunch of it. Mm -hmm. But um, rest assured that on top of the things we're going to be talking about now in this stream and, a lot. and and the things that we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks there is bigger things in motion that i think are going to be i think are, are going to be like game changing right i think it's it's every time we take steps in a direction that we feel is the right the like right you know trajectory yeah. uh, for the game we find that there's more we can do to sort of lock that down and that's been really interesting <laughs> um, because you know you think you've got all the answers and then you're like oh but we can do more there's more that we can exactly. do exactly um, and so there's a lot coming and there's a lot of like cool uh, cool features that are uh, that are coming up um, well is there anything else uh, over the last uh, little little bit that you, that you want to talk about with regards to how things have rolled out in, in the update um, um, we were talking about yeah. we were talking just before the stream started we were talking about um, the uh, Tempest Island being introduced and the islands in general being introduced into the game in a real like a real way they're all actually connected and uh, and how that's 
change the game at all. And I do think Tempest Island in particular has made a pretty big impact uh, from what I've seen. And I've done a lot of fighting on Tempest Island, uh, this update. It's been interest. It's been wild to see it swing. Yeah, and and it's a and because you, we can't really ever test um, how layouts are going to work until it's live, right? Yeah. Like, like you need hundreds of people in the war before you know how it works. So we're also you know like learning, um, still s still learning how players are like interacting with uh, with uh, the water maps, right? Yeah. And and that's that's still a lot of question marks there. Um, one cool thing that happened was I had a round table uh, a few days ago. Uh, it wasn't really a round table, it was a casual conversation um, in one of the channels on Discord and, and we started talking about um, some like quality of life changes with regards to uh, uh, the inventory system and, and that was a really fun conversation. I got a lot of really, mm -hmm. really great ideas uh, from the community and, and um, yeah, it was fun. So I, I hope that I can continue doing more of those in the future. So. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really neat. All right, well, let's move on to our uh, our official dev stream and get into uh, community highlights here. Um, so what do we got on the docket this week? Usually HB is here to talk about <laughs> all this stuff, but he put together the slide, so we... It's still HB. It's still HB. It's just you have to settle for us talking about <laughs> um, uh, some of this stuff. I think, I think the coolest... I think the one um, thing that that's always exciting whenever we release a new um, vehicle, right, mm -hmm. is to see the fan art that is going to come from it, right? Yeah. So it's like it, it's almost like yeah. an event. It's almost like an event for us, right? It's like you know, releasing it is like the start, and you're going to see all the memes. <laughs> and there's so and much more like, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to see all this other stuff. And then there's like videos too, like all the videos of the like of the motorboat and stuff that have come out, just. Have been really dumb. Yeah, well, it's a, was always it's, it's a very interesting vehicle. Was always it's always interesting the first couple of days, um, especially the first day that a new vehicle is released. Um, players tend to use them in really like uh, interesting, I guess, ways. <laughs> yeah. Like I remember when we released the um, CV the, for the first time. And like no one was fighting the war, everyone was driving around in the sea. Driving around building stuff. Yeah, because well, I mean, some of them weren't even building. They were just driving. They around. were just driving like like the I'd slowest walking, vehicle. <laughs> I mean, walking from like one town to the next, and then I'm like, why is this like three CVs driving? Like it's a CV race. A CV <laughs> race, right? Like like that's the kind of stuff that that happens, and eventually it kind of settles down, and then and we find out how players are actually using these new vehicles or not using them. The, and, the, and, uh, there was videos of the motorboat where people just like lined them all up and were like motorboat surfing across like water gaps uh, yeah <laughs> because it doesn't totally work but like they wanted it to and right. so you just kind of like bounce your way across the motorboats and just seeing people set up these like ridiculous courses of motorboats and trying to like surf across them right i don't know it, well, it, it like, reminds me of like the old cv stuff or like the trucks it's rule of thumb is that that we've learned is um if you can do it, people are going to do it, and they're going to and they're going to do it a hundred times, right? <laughs> um, yeah. it's, it's sort of how we have like bulletproof every new feature that we come up with. I think ninety percent of the time, a feature starts off really like wild and cool. It's like, oh, let's let's like put in planes or something as yeah. an example, right? Not that we're doing planes, but but then it will, you know, eventually by okay, well, someone's going to do this, someone's going to do that, someone's going to do this, someone's going to do that, someone's going to grief this way, and it's like, man. I was gonna say it's, it's all fun really and hard to do that. <laughs> it's all fun in games until until there is like like someone takes like uses it as an exploit. Yeah, because right, exactly. right now the motorboat bridges aren't useful, so so they're just kind of funny. Um, it's like most like we've, we've seen people use the barges to like block off a coast, and yeah. it's one of those things where it's like the feature you end up with um, is is usually uh, a a product of like. A whole bunch of like bulletproofing yeah which is why sometimes you'll you'll question like hey why did they do it this way i've been so cool to do it that way and sometimes it is because we missed something but um but sometimes it is just because of all all the bulletproofing that goes into uh new features for a sandbox game right yeah yeah exactly yeah so yeah but this is a great fan art this is, is awesome um I think the quality of this comic is is really is really cool. Um, we say we say this all the time. Uh, 
we, when when we see stuff like comics where like the quality is just constantly improving like the first comics we saw were just like circles just literally circles yeah like, yeah um yeah it's, it's the the quality is really cool and i think i like the i like the, i like the comics because it's one of those things where it, i always imagine you know if we had the spare time it'd be cool if we like worked on our own or something like that even though it's it's not something that is one of our goals but in lieu of that it's always cool to see it from the fans perspective yeah right? exactly yeah i'm sure they're they're doing like a really great job like like you know we wouldn't have the time to make it as good right so um i don't it, yeah it's kind of, you know to your point it's actually kind of cool that um we get a different perspective on like what how people see foxhole than we do because we obviously see it a certain way yeah um and um you know we can we can come to I'm a little bit of a spoiler uh the art contest last year was like a really good eye opener as well like ha- people don't see foxhole 100 percent always the way we do they have their own sort of ideas and opinions which about is great it, which is yeah it's yeah. really really cool and and this is a really good example uh like uh the the, the comic on the left here just oh i love that sty- one. stylistically that was, like yeah i don't think we'd ever produce something like this but it's really cool to see it from that sort well of it's always cool because the the um on like our discord uh the, the internal discord like it, it, almost every day or every other day like one of these gets posted and mm-hmm. and it's a great it's a great like, motivator right yeah like, like seeing all this really cool content um the fmg is not useful <laughs> interesting okay uh, <laughs> Try to bring something actually useful. So I mean, so I mean, it also tells you a little bit about maybe how people perceive certain things. In oh, hundred <laughs> percent, right? It's a, it's a hundred percent. Actually, it's kind of funny because um, you get a lot of valuable feedback from a lot of the fan art, like such as this, because yeah. if something gets to the point where it gets turned into into fan art, we're quite sure that like. It's a problem in the game, or, or there's some kind of like issue, or maybe it's not a problem. It's like a it's like a thing. It's right? a thing, it's a, or yeah. th- there's memes, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's just really cool that that uh, screenshot with uh, the lineup. Yeah, in front of the Callahan statue. So yeah. I I tweeted that out, and I think it's like either broke the record or like is very high up there on um, the most number of people who have a. Uh, viewed or interacted with a tweet um yeah like which it really resonated with a lot of people like i i, I was just kind of oh this is cool i'm gonna tweet it out right yeah, okay. without even thinking about it and like man it got a lot of retweets like lots of comments and and it, it was you know i think it really resonated right so to talk about this for a second we're you know when it comes to this just the, this statue area this plaza that was like right from the very beginning the very very first version of this town i always wanted to have some place like that um some like really important place so that when things like this happened there was like a rallying point there mm. is a place to go it seems like you know this is a landmark for wardens and they won and they got to celebrate like at a landmark a place that's important co- like culturally and it was really cool to see this whole line i think this might be the, the first time they've taken a picture here yeah so like um, to take a step back this was in the post-war um after the last war ended all the wardens uh got together in the plaza and uh, they did this cool screenshot where all of them saluted at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and that and that's the kind of cool stuff I think we were envisioning like at the very very first conception of this game. Like what you know what will players do? Um, just le- actually, it's beyond our expectations because people do so much like role playing and, st- and, and yeah. things like that. And this is just like an extreme example of that. It's so cool to see like the celebration of, like a victory. So what do uh, the colonials go to celebrate? <laughs> The breach. Uh, I don't know. Uh, bias. Um, so let's. Um, we're in bias. <laughs> we're in bias. Uh, so these other two uniforms are really cool, and and it and always brings back that question of like, when are we gonna put new uniforms? In? <laughs> well, I was gonna say like, there always seems to be this, um, you know, this imagery of wardens with gas masks. Mm. It's something that comes up. Repeatedly. I mean, was I'm that really... something that was started by A2DK? A2DK, and it just sort of like perpetuated um, into like it, it's kind of funny because that was not made up by us. Like that was not made up by us at all. It was completely driven by the players, and eventually 
turn into a permanent i mean it could just be because the 82 dk has like um such a presence right that 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 it just becomes it's permeated the yeah. the zeitgeist i i'm not sure but i it, it's it's just really we have gas masks in the game so it's not like it's not like you can't say it's not canon or something but it's it has we they were doing it long before there were gas masks and when um, we added gas masks everyone was wearing them they were like, just wearing them yeah everyone in that clan was wearing them on the first day for no reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh no it's it's really it's really cool yeah um, and these are high quality like uh these are really high quality these are great cool awesome does that, does that come out, come to the end of the community highlights yeah See right. the highlights. development update um why don't you want to take it away yeah i know this is a tough one to take away because it's <laughs> it's a little unusual uh we have a a new feature a couple of new features to talk about um and there's a new vehicle included but it's not the usual type of vehicle it's it's part of a larger feature um mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna uh show what that is um so we're gonna be introducing this concept of relic vehicles and these are basically um this is a feature we want to do for a very long time but it was never like this pressing priority it's just really it, it's almost like a it's like a passion feature where okay it's not really like fixing i mean it fixes it's going to solve some issues but but it's not like this um problem heavily problem solving type of feature it's mm -hmm. more of a cool feature that we want to sneak in at some point point. and this idea that um you can find and reactivate old pieces of tech yeah um uh, sort of going along the same theme as like scrapping but in this case you find these um more intact vehicles in the world that mm -hmm. you can reactivate and you can use them right yeah. yeah um and this and we're working on a couple of these so this is sort of a an early look this is uh the armored fighting tractor um it's, it's called the it's called the alpha the um, alpha <laughs> yeah, yeah the and quote alpha <laughs> it's that's the the name that you know soldiers would have called it yes uh, yeah and um and and there's a reason for that <laughs> and this is a and this represents very very early tech um in the old wars uh from from a very long time ago and you're able to find um and almost almost like excavate that's that's not quite the, the right word but but that's the feeling right yeah. um that that you uh it's it's you old can reactivate this old tech and you can use them yeah um and these are unique instances um so once you reactivate them um they'll never come again in the same war and it's an opportunity cool. for us to introduce some of um uh these interesting vehicles in in various parts of the war that usually don't see them right so yeah, like yeah. so right now that you know there is a question of for the first uh couple of uh the first week let's say well it's you know kind of the same thing every time nothing changes up but it's a way to say okay uh you can have something like an armored vehicle that that shows up much earlier on and it's really it's really um it, and then you have to figure out how to handle it if the other side if they get a hold of one of these um it's a it's a problem that you have to solve mm. um but it's a unique problem right it's not it's not just the same thing every time and it's not gonna be a constant problem it's gonna be like you know say that colonials get one of these like really really early on mm. and they use it to make a push like on say deadlands and like it helps to, it, it may help to win one battle but it's not it may not like it's not gonna last forever right it's um, not gonna last forever but we're hopeful kickstart that, like a yeah a we're front absolutely and we're hopeful that it will create a little bit of a story with um each one of these that you usually don't tend to see until uh a bit later on in the war right yeah um and this is you know this is just a sample like like there's gonna be um uh we're we're working on a few things and uh <laughs> um uh they're different in their own way i'm trying to talk about it by not talking about it which is always frustrating for you guys but we um, mentioned that the word relics before though this isn't like a we new definitely term. yeah we definitely talk about different types of relics like um things in the environment uh some things are just kind of like props that that you can't even use and and this is a version of relics that you can use right mm -hmm. and um you know they're gonna be we're still um figuring out exactly uh how they're going to be placed in the world but um the idea is that we do want it to be random to some extent um but we're gonna have more details on this uh in the dev blog next week 
Um, in fact, a lot of the, the, the stuff we're talking about um, right now, it's sort of just a little bit of a sneak peek because the last update just went out the door and mm -hmm. we hope to expand upon it in the dev blog next week. So next week's dev blog, you'll probably be able to find out about the other Relic vehicles. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, and, and to think about it just, you know, just from a thematic perspective, like there are component nodes and scrap nodes and there's all these things sort of left behind in the world already. So this is something that's like, okay, it's left behind, but it's intact. So mm. you can use it. Um, Absolutely. Like this is almost like an extension of the, the themes that we've been having in the game. And I can tell you, Matt, that <clears throat> this is one of those ones where it's like, you know, I just <laughs> want to do it because it's fun. Yeah, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a cool idea. And, yeah. and furthermore... It's a little bit of a selfish feature like for us, right? Yeah. Like, so, um, and furthermore, like this probably won't be the only thing, uh, you know, the only one. So in the future, there could be a lot of variety that these kinds of things add, but it'll just depend on how wars play out. Um, and hopefully we can make it something that is fun to be different every time, right? Because that's the, that's the dream. Yes. Uh, yeah. As opposed to just like optimizing to the best thing every time and, and doing that. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, the next thing is we're working on some quality of life updates and I think you guys are gonna, a lot of you guys have been asking for um, some of these tools <laughs> yeah. and uh, we're gonna be, this is again also a sample, there's, there, there's more quality of life um, uh, features coming up soon. Uh, I think this one is gonna be really important, we've been hurting on this one for a while, yeah. but um, we basically want to introduce uh, rich, rich tool tips um, for the maps, right? So this is like an enhancement of the map screen um, where you will be able to get information about um, uh, various factories, uh, various bases, and um, it'll allow logistics players, be very valuable for logistics players to use these to know where to go finally without um, re relying on asking someone in text chat or voice chat. You, you'd be able to see, for example, one of the big things is seeing where facilities are built, seeing the progress of those facilities so you know where to bring your upgrade parts, um, seeing the number of uh, factory orders that are currently at a factory so you know which ones to use. You can like, there's a lot of room to like optimize where you drive uh, now, uh, where you want to do your logging. And for example, as a base, like you'd be able, there, there are certain certain key items like supplies um, um, that, that, that you will always want to know about, right? Like you, you always want to know about how many uh, soldier supplies are left. So if you want to help out, um, you can I, help out. I can say like, uh, while I, I've, been, I've been playing the game a little bit more to try to wrap my head around the, you know, the current state of things mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks. And I can say that like, just even as like a frontline soldier knowing where there are supplies, is like I've run to like across maps to bases only to find out there's nowhere to spawn. <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, there's like, also the issue of like multiple bases and, and and sort of like finding the finding like the main one, which is a problem in itself. But, yeah. But um. But but this is this 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 tool is going to help with uh, things like that. Um, being able to get some information up on a stockpile, right? Yeah. Um, exactly. It's going to be extremely valuable and. The amazing thing about this feature is going to work across the whole world, mm. right? So you can be in one region and you can peek into the next one and uh, see where all the facilities are in the next region, right? I don't know how much detail you're uh, willing to get into right now, but I do have a question. Yeah. Um, is this going to require like a radio to have this knowledge um, or, or some kind of like connection to your bases? Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, the way we're doing it initially is we are going to be providing it as a tool that just works. Um, but these are things that we may tie into um, the intelligence game in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but it, makes, we, it makes sense. Yeah, and, and we had to make a decision actually. It's a very good question, Matt, because we were thinking about that. We were thinking, okay, we want to tie this into the intelligence game, but the intelligence game is going to take a while to like, develop, and we don't want to wait that long. Like we know this is a big pain that the logic players have felt for a long time and we want to alleviate that 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 pain mm -hmm. first and then we'll worry about the other stuff after right mm -hmm. um and there is more quality of life features um uh that are to come and you know again um the the dev blog next week is going to have more on this so so if you're excited about more quality of life features like this tune into the dev blog <laughs>
Sounds good. This, this stream has become <laughs> a plug for the yeah, it's, huge plug for uh, the blog. Right? Yeah, it's just it's just advertising. <laughs> yeah, it's advertising. That's what we're doing. It's a tease. It's a trailer. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it for now for the development update. Yeah, a little bit of a light week, but like we said, we just launched an update. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's tough it's tough for us to just like here's all the next features. Well, I mean, those are also very exciting features. I almost want to not talk about them, but <laughs> gotta yeah. talk about something. Hey, I mean, we show a little bit. There's still lots more to come. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so uh, last year, uh, let's talk about this. I guess last year we did a pretty cool art contest that had some, uh, you know, really awesome pieces that came in. It was uh, it was art and it was writing. Um, and uh, the overall winner was uh, Patchouli, uh, who won for uh, their written piece, um, which was, I can't remember the name of it now, I think it was, uh, it is, yeah. anyway, I can't remember, You'll have, you can go find it on our blog, it's, it's really, really good. Um, and uh, if you can uh, go to the next slide, um, and the art winner was uh, this piece, which is this like really epic battle scene, and we think it sort of encapsulated the... Um, <laughs> The, the epic battles. The epic battles of, yeah. of Foxhole. Um, so when we were coming up with the art contest for this year, because we wanted to, we wanted to do another art contest because we had a lot of fun with it. We think you guys had a lot of fun with it. We thought uh, it, it, we got some really cool uh, participation and uh, really cool pieces that that came in. Um, so uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different. Do you want to move ahead? Or? Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. So <clears throat> we wanted to do something a little bit different and. Um, uh, you know that comes from the uh, human spirit. Um, we want to we want you guys to um, come up with a piece that shows, like, in you know, in the midst of war, what how, how resilient is the human spirit? Um, and so there is not gonna be any real requirement for medium. Um, however, you feel like you can uh, get this across. Um, one of the things we're not looking for, or a couple of things we're not looking for, you can see that here in, in, the, in the judging considerations. Uh, we're not looking for, you know, a warden or colonial pride. We're not looking for like heroic, like depictions of heroism. And we're not looking for battle scenes. We're looking for, you know, personal conflicts, uh, characters that are uh, rich and full, um, and uh, just something a little bit more than just like the sort of the glory side of war, because that's easy to come across what's really hard to get across is the personal side of war, how it impacts a, a, a human um so uh so that's that's the kind of general gist of it um we are looking for any like i said any medium it says uh you can do it in 3d you can write a story you can make a video you can sing a song you can write a song it doesn't matter we're going to judge everything based on the theme not the actual uh, medium this time so that's very different last year we were very restricted <laughs> in our medium uh this year we are not well i mean the the cool thing is that last year we actually saw a lot of really great versions of the stuff that we listed under the things that we're not interested in exactly yeah because we've already we've already um, seen that we've already seen it and and we've seen such great versions of it that that seeing more will just be like okay well how are you going to top this really great stuff that we've seen so yeah. it's like now it would be nice to see this this like whole other side right well and and the other thing too is that it is really part of our game uh there are so many times where players are just kind of hanging out doing things in in the game that have nothing to do with war or combat mm -hmm. um the you know a lot of the lore in the game isn't just about war or combat it's about how people are affected by it that, that's something that we're sort of passionate about as well in terms of our depiction of of war um it's a complicated um part of history <laughs> it's not it's not as simple it's not as simple as just like um it's not as simple as good versus evil so uh i think that's kind of the interesting part about uh where we're going this year i hope you guys are excited about it i hope I, i'm sure we're going to get some really interesting things that we didn't expect um and uh if you have any questions feel free to uh, message kfc he'll have all the answers for you um this is live on our website right now i think um i think it might be posted in the in the chat already. I don't know if KFC has done it, um, but uh, but I will say like I will say like bring your uh, bring your A game and and really like try to nail home this theme. And I think because uh, you guys have some really cool ideas, we've seen some really like you know there's been some really good examples of a bunch of soldiers sitting around a fire in the past. Like oh, yeah. those types of things are 
so much almost more surprising than like a, we expect to see battle scenes and stuff because that's sort of the the exciting flashy part um so when we see a really like well executed like subtle scene it, it just blows us away and i think we want to see we want to be blown away so cool yeah exciting exciting q a so i think that's it so yeah uh now is time for q a um if you guys want to uh ask questions do so in the chat right now and uh, i will ask them and uh to to the panel uh, <laughs> and uh panel, and two. Will, <laughs> panel of two and uh we'll try to answer them uh so i'm just going to ask the, one of the first questions here um would you consider adding small monuments to the world to commemorate world events like a monument in jade cove to commemorate jade cove I think that's a really cool idea. Um, I, I think that that is that is I think that's definitely in in line with with the kind of um, the kind of goals we have is like player driven stories, right? So I don't know why we wouldn't be encouraged to to want to do something like that. I think figure out how we can do it is, is is sort of more of the challenge, right? So I think my my perspective on that is a little bit different than yours. Um, I think we should allow players to build and or vote on monuments that are built in the world and where it goes uh, for events like that. Because it was created, the memory and the story was created by players, so mm. why shouldn't the rest of it? Do you know what I mean? Yes, uh, absolutely. And, I, and so I think like for us to do it doesn't have the same kind of impact, in my opinion. Oh, I see what the question was. I, I actually thought they meant like, I think they meant like me going and place one oh, in the world, okay. but I'm saying I think it'd yeah. be cooler if no, that I wasn't the way you. it was done. I agree with you a thousand percent. Is is um, adding something player driven like that and making it permanent? Yeah, would be way cooler than than us putting it in. Because a lot of the history that's added to the world is the history of the world, not the present. Yeah. And so for me, all the present things, like all the monuments that do, like the, the monuments in the monument park in the, the home regions, all yeah. that stuff is, that was players that did that. Yeah. So for me, it's like, I would like to continue that trend where if something happens because of a war or in a war, I'd like that to be memorialized by players, not by devs. Yeah, that um, would be far superior if it was a player built thing. Yeah, um, so, so that's cool. It's a, that's a cool idea like across, uh, across the board in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um... Savutil, I'm probably butchering that name, asks, um, will we ever be able to use a bayonet as a secondary weapon and not having to be attached to a rifle or a carbine? I haven't thought of that one, actually. I think that at the beginning of the game, when we first started working on it, we shied away from lots of melee weapons because we didn't want melee to become um, a big focus of the game. Uh, now, now that we're sort of it, it, more in the clear, like we know it's not going to be in danger of that um, of danger in danger of a bunch of people just kind of running around and like dancing around um, trying to like uh, hit each other with a knife mm -hmm. um, maybe that's something we can revisit I don't think there's anything about that that is against our goals um, I, I think it's I think it's, it's how more we figure it out like the amount of I don't even think it's necessarily a very difficult thing to implement, but it's but it's you know probably not on the top of the list, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a neat idea. I mean, sometimes it's important to not only work on things that are at the top of the list, like kind of like the relic vehicles, right? Like that's mm -hmm. not necessarily the top of the list, um, but so it could fall under the category of it's not on top of the list, but hey, it's a cool thing. Maybe we should throw it into an update, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a cool idea. Um, X Google asked, "What is the uh, what is the winner of the art contest?" Um, I would prefer you to uh, Crazy Flying Chicken ping him, ask him, and maybe he can post in the chat what that is because I, I don't want to speak out of out of turn um, on that. He's been sort of taken care of. <laughs> um, Peter P Peter Milley asks, uh, "Why do Wardens have more relic tanks on the map that you showed?" <laughs> Because it's a prototype. No, because we're huge warden bias. Yeah, I mean, I told you we're warden bias. Earlier, yeah, I so. mean, isn't that obvious? Like, why? Um, yeah, it's a it's mock up. In in fact, I think there won't even be that many vehicles. Um, I, I think that was just a a neat visual to to um, so you can imagine how random it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, he, I can't pronounce his name. Uh, what were the inspirations for the game design of Foxhole? What were the inspirations? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it was actually like uh, a love of like history, as, as, as strange as that sounds. Um, I, I know that the thing that excited me was um, like when you read about history and uh, all the all of like the the awesome and I, when I say awesome, I mean both in a bad way and in like an incredible like wow i can't believe something of that scale happened type of way um all the things that happened the, those all those like war stories um mm -hmm. sort of made me made me feel like hey if 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 there's a game that can kind of encapsulate that that where there can be all these stories that where they feel like they only happen once um uh that would be an amazing game right and, and it was actually like real players that make up that story as opposed to like some some sort of like canned thing. Yeah. Um, I, I it sounds strange, but but that's yeah. probably like where a lot of the inspiration came from, both from the lore and from the game the game's perspective. Um, I don't think there was ever a point where we were like, hey, there's that game that's cool. Let's take that and mash it with this and make this new game, right? So. I mean, we all have inspirations for games we play, like. You know, we've talked about it a few times in other streams. Like, you know, Eve Online is a really like mm -hmm. big sort of inspiration. Uh, well, Dark, think, Dark Souls is a big inspiration I, in a lot of ways. Um, I think they're, they're inspirations in terms of like it's a um, muse more than it's like, like a like they they have like elements of yeah. the thing that we're trying to do, and and it's like hey, like it's it's cool because you know there 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 are things in there that uh, that that. That we want to see so it's cool to see that in like another game right um mm -hmm. but but yeah yeah um you know and if, if we're talking about like thematically um obviously world war one and world war two we can't even like there's that's obvious um but i think uh you know some of the other places is um like further back in history like not just world war one and world war two uh actually more f like in terms of like story and the story and the world and the lore it has very little to do with world war one and two to be perfectly yeah. honest it's more um, about like ancient history actually yeah um we took else. a lot more inspiration from that um from things like obviously like game of thrones and, and other things that we were really into um in terms of what we think is just cool as opposed to just what is expected and and that's probably like a mantra for most of our game development um, yeah, actually, I think we based most the majority of the original lore around um, like the ancient Greece, Peloponnesian Wars, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and and that was sort of like, you know, like what if the, those 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 um, uh, kind of yeah. like those like city states back then, if they went to war with the technology of, of today of like World War Two, right? yeah, of, of, of that um, era, sorry, was sort of the original like spark, right? So <laughs> yeah, and. So, so that's I, I always find it kind of funny when people sort of attach like World War One and World War Two stuff onto the story because I it, it so doesn't fit, but it, it's it makes sense. For I mean, us. in fairness, it makes sense. <laughs> so, in fairness, it is you know when we look at the game, it looks like World it looks War like World War One yeah, and World War Two. So. But for me, like it's just funny yeah. from my perspective because I'm so skewed. Like my perspective is so like in a totally different realm. Yeah. Um, so there's a really interesting question here. Um, from uh, Commissar Jimbo, um, do you feel that developers have become uh, further detached from the community coming from the 2016, 2017, and the, and the um, free to play days? Uh, do we feel that like the lines between players and devs have separated further, or or not? Um, how, like, how do you feel the state of the like relationship between dev and and community has changed? Um, That's the, the I definitely feel like things have changed. I think it'd be it'd be naive. It'd be naive to think it hasn't. Um, I I think we've made a really good effort to make sure that we're still um, if there is one thing and I think that uh, crazy flying chicken has kind of encouraged everyone to be doing this kind of over and over again and and I think he's right is to make sure that whatever we do we're still having like the one on one type of like conversations right even though we can't talk to everyone right yeah but that at certain points with the round tables or just the random like drop-ins that that we are like engaging with people um as 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 people and not like through some some sort of like marketing announcement that yeah. that we do ask people and have a two-way conversation about like um 
how they're feeling about the game. Uh, when we get there, when we talk to people, it's not just, you know, these are the features that are coming out, but it's, it's like asking questions, like, um, and then taking those questions and then asking further questions or maybe, you know, so it's like, it's like a two week conversation. And, and I think that yes, things, things have changed. We probably, the ratio of, of, uh, of the, the percentage of the, of the player base that we talk to in that manner um has definitely much lower now just by the numbers like you know before we were dealing with you know hundreds of people and now there's like thousands of people um it's just a function of time but but i i, I think we've i'm happy that we continue to do like the the one-on-one -on -one conversations uh um and i i hope we can continue doing that right? and, and you know i i think it goes to show the where we, how we how important we think the community is that for a team our size we hired a community manager that usually doesn't happen usually it's much bigger and I think um, ever since I think I think as the the game grew and as the community grew uh, that became a necessity uh, because full t it's a full time job to make sure that the community is being heard and, and you know KFC is very good at it and uh, and there's a lot. Um, there's a there's a lot to do, but I think we all I think a lot of people on the team uh, do really try to you know stay reaching out like like I definitely do my best <laughs> when, when I can. Uh, sometimes I you know I'll I'll just pop in and, and start talking to people and, and people are messaging me and, and I, I'm free to answer whenever I can. Um, but uh, I, I do think you know th things do change, especially as the game changes. Because when we first launched like the combat prototype, for instance, it was like a handful of people playing the game very easy to talk to every single person right but now you know when there's thousands of people playing the game over the course of any given day it's very it's very we can't it's very hard to talk for every developer to talk to everybody um, yeah i and i have like no like i don't think anyone in the dev team likes to be spammed right um mm -hmm. so for sure don't <laughs> don't spam us yeah. but i think most um most messages i will respond to right like if you dm me um, I, I sometimes take a long time to respond. Maybe I'll take like a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> um, and sometimes my response will be really, really quick. Like it'll be like if you write a paragraph, I might respond with like a sentence. Yeah. Um, but I, but I do try to respond. Um, it doesn't always happen, but I, it, I think I definitely respond more often than I don't. Um, but my my suggestion is if you ever want to ask uh, me a question, make sure the the question is clear. Um, mm -hmm. and that um, then I should have no problem in responding to it. Yeah, and I'm the same way. Like, people, like, you know, just people reaching out to me and saying, hey, like, I think there's stuff going on in this map or with these things, and, you know, it, it has made an impact on the game simply just by reaching out. I'm not saying it's going to every time. Like, <laughs> every suggestion I, like, you know, I get personally, we keep, we're not going to implement, <laughs> um, which is why, you know, we created official channels for that stuff because it's very hard to... Uh, you know, keep track of at the scale that it's at. But I think everybody on the team would be remiss if they, like, they'd be lying if they said that they wouldn't try to respond. I, th I can almost guarantee you. Uh, but I I think the our relationship with the community is very unique and, and really interesting to me. Um, I don't see a lot of other uh, games sort of doing what we're doing, and I think that's really interesting. Um, so uh, let's move on to another question. Um, this is something that I, I see come up a lot, Mark, um, and I just sort of figured maybe we should it'd be cool to talk about. Um, when will we see uh, better weapon attachments for the game? Like, um, or will we? I guess will we see better weapon attachments for the game? Like, you know, sights or uh, like stocks, things like that. Yeah, it's like a, any kind of weapon customization. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, my so it's a very good question because I was talking to Julian about this last week, and I was like, what. Uh, what kind of attachments um, uh, would we expect from like World War II level of tech? And he just joked back like, oh, we should add like laser beams and, and, <laughs> and things like that. And he was just joking, but, um, but I, I would like to hear suggestions on that actually, because besides uh, the attachments that we have right now, like the rifle grenade launcher, uh, the bayonet um certainly there's there are other things but i don't know how frequent um they frequently they were used uh in the 
technology world that we're in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, we don't strictly have to follow those rules as well. So I'm actually interested if if you have ideas on 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 what that can be, I'd actually like to hear about it. Um, because like, how can it work in Foxhole? Yeah, I definitely think there is room for that, and it wouldn't be hard for us to implement something something of that sort. So if you have any weapon attachment ideas um, that that you think makes sense in the world, uh, let us know. I think it's really tough too because like. Uh, coming from someone who really likes playing as like infantry, right? Like you, you lose your weapons so fast sometimes. Like you're just down like really quickly in in foxhole. And sure, you can go recover and stuff, but it's almost like you have to set that up. You have to set that up every time you like pull a weapon from mm. from a, a stockpile. So it's almost like it maybe you know maybe there's a system in which like you can sort of prefab stockpile stuff. I don't. You know, and, and that can come with like tech and research, and uh, I think there's some interesting avenues there. Um, Daxter Zero asks, "Are you planning to implement some kind of fire engine uh, for weapons like flamethrowers and molotovs?" Yeah, that's that's in the roadmap, um, but it's it's nowhere near the top. Um, but we'd like to do that. <laughs> I guess that's all I can say. Like, like we would definitely want to do fire. Uh, there's some very obvious, um, cool things that we can add to the game, like flamethrowers, uh, flamethrower tanks. Um, I mean, napalm or something. Molotov cocktails, uh, incendiary grenades. <laughs> Should I just keep listening? To things? <laughs> fire barrels. <laughs> fire barrels. <laughs> You just put red barrels randomly places. You can build them. Uh, yeah, with, with no, it's a, yeah, no, it's a cool idea that 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 we want to explore at some point. But I don't think we we see that in, in the next couple of months, at least. Um, Aquilius asks, in a nutshell, where do you see Foxhole in a year? Well, I don't want to spoil it all for you guys, but <laughs> um, I really want. I think there's a lot of. Uh, um artificial things in the game still um like the way the war plays out it is it still very much feels like there's there's like three three columns in the world um and and then there's everything else as you know that that's not what what we we want we've been trying to break out of it and 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 we've done that to like varying degrees of success but our dream is that it just feels like a natural uh, massive land, right? And and that the front line can be more like arbitrary, um, and and it feels much more like a natural, large world as opposed to like a video game world, right? I think that's one of the major goals, and I hope that in a year from now we look back and we're like, okay, it does feel more natural. It feels better. I, th- I um, think um, like you know, w- one of the big things is just to just to sort of like echo what you're saying, like a naturally evolving front. Rather yeah. than an artificially, because right now, you know, there is no like east-west yeah. sort of movement. It's it it all it's always just like boom, and then that's the front. And there's all these kind of like little. I'm not saying we're gonna be able to solve these things, but but these are problems we're trying to solve. Like, um, pretty crazy things. Uh, like, um, can we can we change the port bases? Can we not have port bases? Um, can we introduce, can we remove some of the magic, like being able to like teleport everywhere um, uh, to some degree like we can do now and, and make, just make the war feel more natural um, and, you know, introduce, um, I think the, uh, the intelligence game needs a major revamp. Um, I think intelligence, can be so much more in the game. I think the base building is is going to be, you know, we're going to like flip the tables there, and 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 you know that's going to hopefully look like something entirely new next year. Um, Logi, there's there's tons of uh, work that to do with Logi. So I it's you know I think I think that's I think those are some of the big things that that we're that we're looking into doing right now um but some stuff has to happen before a lot of these things can actually occur 
Um, there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes work that needs to be done um, to support this this sort of like larger uh, game, right? This mm -hmm. this this larger war, larger game, and not and most of that stuff is really boring from the um, perspective of of the user, right? Like a lot of the back end tech could take months to work on with with like no noticeable change um, from the user, user perspective, but we have to take the time to do these things because if we don't do them, the game will never progress, right? Like sometimes you probably get the feeling of like being stuck, right? Like why are the port bases there since forever? And why are we not, why are we not uh, getting rid of them? Well, it's because there's, there's huge technical problems that need to be solved. And we can't do that on this crazy schedule of like releasing updates, you know, with tons of content every time. Like maybe we have to like dial back a bit on 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 uh, some of these like releases so that we have the time to work on on the big pieces, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not something that is probably exciting to hear, but you know, there's there's it's it's for the long term good, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's an interesting question because I think it's hard to predict. <laughs> as well exactly what's going to happen but uh i think everything you know you said is where our, our heart is at in terms of what we want to see yeah so um press score has an interesting question um that i'm not going to answer but uh will there be clarity on what systems of government uh Veli and siva have um are the wardens actually called an empire do the colonials have a head of government um it's all there if you read between the lines <laughs> you just got to read between the lines i'm just not going to tell you right away uh, like right off the bat, um, but uh, it's all there. Uh, it's, I think like a lot of pieces of the puzzle are there. Um, they're just fragmented, and you have to figure it out. Uh, more will come, and it will you know illuminate different pieces. But it's never going to just be like this is how it is, and this is how it is. You have to. You're being so, even more vague than I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am, but that's you know that's the way it is. You know there was a there was a I was on Trench Talk, which is a cool podcast. If you guys are interested in the game, I think it's interesting. Um, and uh, I think I probably spoke the most about the lore that I ever have in that one podcast. So if you're, maybe there's some missing pieces there, but uh, but for the most part, it's all in the game. It's just, it's just not, it's not fed to you. It's not spoon fed, right? So, um, you know, you guys may have already speculated and gotten it 100%, but I'm not going to say this is exactly how it is because it's just not how we do things. Um <clears throat> Last question. Yeah, last question. Yeah. Well, no, I'm going to do two questions because sure. one's a joke. Yeah. Um, Wraith one four six. Can you or can you not promise zombies next October? <laughs> uh, I don't like promising things, <laughs> but I'd like to see zombies come back. It was um, a fun event. I think. I think it was I, pretty successful. Actually, you know, just just to this is not what we're doing, but because um, we haven't, quite frankly, we haven't thought about it that much. But it'd be kind of cool if um, if the Dead Harvest event was just a part of the conquest. Um, so like there's a war going on and, and you kill, um, you know, any soldier you kill has a chance of coming back as a, a zombie. Yeah, because I think it'd be hard for us to like convert Tempest Island again. <laughs> well, it's part of see, it'd just be interesting to like see a part, part of the big game. Yeah, of, um, of course. But, but you know, this is, this is not planned. This is just like, hey, what would be exciting if you imagine it, right? I mean, yeah. we like to hear from you guys. If you have a cool idea for how that that uh, for what we can do for this year's Halloween event, um, we love to hear about it, right? That that's the kind of area that that's really flexible, right? We mm -hmm. can do whatever the hell we want. We can break the rules, right? It's what we. I mean, you. If you guys remember, we put that whole thing together in like two weeks. <laughs> so, well, it was uh, a lot less than two weeks, but uh, what well, was? I think it was like two weeks from like conception to ship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, we can we can do like stuff like that. Like events and stuff are definitely easier to iterate quickly, but yeah. it's just a matter of what we think is cool and what isn't. Um, all right, so last question. Um, I just want to find something kind of interesting that. Uh... Okay. Um, Sir Metal Metal Metalodon asks: um, Will the storage system be updated to help raw uh, help with raw material storage? Sorry, can you will the storage system be up will the storage system yes. be updated to help with raw material storage? Storing raw materials right now is a pain and often resources get locked in port bases because because no one wants to sit and click on an icon for 10 minutes. Ah, yes. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. I think we'd like to take a look at that. Um, I, I think when we work on some of the base building revamp work, we probably want to take a look at that specific problem or maybe even like earlier, right? If you have ideas on, on what the ideal system for that, uh, how that could work, uh, please let us know, right? I think we should do another round table. It's a lot of these like um, uh, questions where I feel like people have suggestions <laughs> that, I, that I really like to hear. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll take a look at later this week to see if there's time to do a round table. Well, that, that you heard it. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, let's uh, let's call it into this dev stream. This was a, a nice, chill, just kind of low key dev stream. Uh, but, you know, uh, just the new vehicle. And just the new vehicle. And some, some really important big tools feature, for but logic, low key, but. <laughs> low key, and an art contest. So don't forget about the art contest. Um, make sure you check the website and ask Crazy Flying Chicken every question that you have about the art contest, and I'm yeah. sure he'll post updates as they come. Uh, and um, I think I think that's it. Great. Unless there's anything else you have to follow up? Uh, no. The only other thing is, uh, I'll say the stuff that HB usually says. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, this stream occurs every other week on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv right. slash Foxville Game. And um, yeah, well, I guess we'll see you in two weeks. And look out for that blog with all the exciting stuff that we plugged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next week there'll be another dev blog with, with cool new stuff, and we'll be back in two weeks for another dev stream. Uh, we'll see you then, and as always, stay foxy.